Okay, let, yes, uh, let me first uh, try to share the screen. Sure. Okay, so uh, uh, our guest today, Dr. Trambak uh, Bachitaria, uh, he's a PhD holder from University of Calcutta, India, and uh, he's also held uh, postdoctoral positions at Indian Institute of Technology, University of Cape Town, South Africa, University of Michigan, United States, and he's currently currently a senior uh, researcher at uh, Bugliabov Laboratory Institute at the Joint Institute of Nuclear Research, Dobna, Russia. Uh, we'll talk about Boltzmann, Gibbs, and Thales distribution in uh, high energy uh, collision physics. Dr. Bachetari, it's an honor uh, to have you. Thanks very much for your introduction. Uh, so it, I, I have shared my screen. I think it's visible now. Yes, we can see it. Okay, that's excellent. So it's an honor to be able to present in the seminar series. Actually, I first came to know about uh, your institutions, about the City of Science, Technology and Innovation through the Joint Institute for Nuclear Research where I work. So it's located uh, in a town called Dubna, around 100 kilometers from Moscow. It's a small, leafy and sleepy town. And uh, in this organization, there are different uh, pedagogic uh, programs uh, online internships, uh, specifically, specifically that was useful during the pandemic time. And uh, that's called uh, the interest program. I'm sorry, somehow it's hanged. <laughs> yes, so there's the interest program and uh, that was an international remote student training at the GINR. So through this, one of the students, uh, uh, Ayman, uh, he worked with me on a topic that I'm going to discuss today that's related to the cell statistics, sort of a generalization of the conventional Boltzmann Gibbs statistics that we do in our undergrad and postgrad in many other fields. And I'm happy that our collaboration didn't just uh, stop there. And uh, there is one more extension of uh, his short thesis uh, towards the quantum domain that is right now on review. So I really appreciate uh, the education and teaching values and uh, uh, excellence you impart into students. And uh, I'm quite, uh, I'm really, impressed and honored because of uh, the level of education you impart to the students and because I'm able to present a seminar here. So this uh, laboratory I hail from, that's uh, named after Nikolai Nikolaevich Bagalubov, uh, who in my opinion can very easily be regarded as one of the most versatile theoretical physicists uh, in the 20th century. And, uh, apart from many other discoveries uh, that are associated uh, with his name. Uh, if you go to the Wikipedia page, uh, it's famous for something called the Bogolubov approach. So uh, that is a warm, kind uh, ambience for physics discussion. So I assume that uh, there can be a few students like undergrads maybe, even postgrads, uh, grad students. So, Let's take uh, his approach today <laughs> and uh, let's have some discussion. And uh, I want to have. So uh, let's, let's take his approach today. And uh, I want to mm, make the presentation as pedagogic as uh, possible, maybe some parts, uh, maybe a bit more technical than the usual ones, but uh, let's begin with our 
in seminar topic, that's a journey from the Boltzmann juice to the Salis distribution in high school living groups. So the agenda is, uh, well, the Boltzmann juice statistics, so the statistical mechanics, uh, conventional one that we study in our postgrads, in our undergrads, uh, in our textbooks, uh, that successfully describes many systems. Mm, but uh, that may not be true for all the systems we see around. There may be more complicated systems that need some more generalized description. And uh, the boltzmann jeep statistics is associated with exponential functions. Uh, just to remind that uh, the probabilities of microstates uh, that we denote by pi, for example, i is a microstate, that is related to an exponential raised to the power negative energy i of the microstate, energy level, divided by some temperature. Whereas uh, for high energy collision physics, uh, we'll discuss what it means and how it leads to something called working plasma. It has been seen that uh, the particle production that we detect after the working plasma is uh, uh, hadronized, uh, it forms hadrons like pions, kaons, and protons. So the particle distribution is no more described by the Boltzmann Gibbs statistics. It's rather, it follows some generalization scheme that's uh, given by Constantino Salis, uh, an entropic form he proposed in 1988. And uh, these distributions uh, are uh, having long tails in comparison with exponential distributions. They are power limited, as we can see in the figure, for example. So the green one, it's a heavy tail distribution. It, uh, dies, uh, it died, uh, dies down much lower in comparison with an exponential at large argument x. So fx is, uh, for our case, it may be particle number. x may be momentum. So in a sense, uh, we'll talk about the momentum distributions. Well. Uh, the transverse momentum distribution, to be precise, uh, the transverse momentum means it's related to the x and y component of momentum. So the plan is uh, to introduce briefly what high energy collision means and how it leads to a uh, state of matter called quarking plasma that existed uh, microseconds after Big Bang. And uh, then how Boltzmann Gibbs and uh, Sally statistics comes into picture, come into picture uh, as far as the physics of high collision is concerned. And as far as the working plasma, or in short, QGP is concerned. So quarks uh, and gluons, they're like uh, building blocks of matter. You can see that you have U, a quark, chunk quark, strain, strange quark, down quark, bottom top, and neutrinos and the mediatory particles like gluons and photons and W plus minus and Z zero and all the fundamental particles. So when uh, they they produce, they, they just uh, they are the constituents of everything we see around us. So in this figure, uh, we see that on the left hand side we have two uh, ions, heavy ions. Uh, colliding with each other. For example, they can be lead or gold ions. Inside them, there are protons and neutrons that are, uh, they, inside them are quarks, up, down, and so on. And when they are colliding with uh, fantastically large energies, uh, these quarks and gluons inside uh, the hadrons residing inside the ions, they are liberated for a brief period of time. So we can see that uh, B is the impact parameter, that's the distance between the centers of two incoming ions. And uh, after the collision, some of them, uh, some part of them uh, take part in collision. Uh, they are the participants and uh, they form something called the quarking plasma medium. And the others, they are white, like uh, they are color neutral, and uh, the color degrees of freedom are now liberated from them. 
but uh, there is an interaction region that this form, this medium is formed. Also, this is heavy on collision, but sometimes we may talk about uh, proton proton collisions instead of lead or gold collisions, or proton and lead collisions, xenon and xenon collisions, and so on and so forth. The proton proton collision is uh, important as it acts as a reference. So, all the comparisons in experimental observables, they are uh, done through the comparison with proton proton collision. So, in a sense, when we mean high energy collision, so we uh, try to encompass both heavy ion and proton proton collisions. But when we mention heavy ion collisions, we only mean lead and gold gold collisions. So, why to study this uh, medium that's called uh, quark ring plasma? This, uh, first of all, uh, for me, so there are some, uh, there, there can be many interesting aspects. It's like a quantum matter physics in a new domain. Uh, the universe existed uh, in this state of microsecond after the Big Bang. Also, this is one of the early universe, one only phase transition, early universe phase transition that's uh, accessible in the laboratory. So there are many ways to, there, there are many motivations to study the physics of uh, quark ring plasma. So there are some pictorial schemes how um, they may be created. So in this figure on the left hand side, if you see uh, if you see a boundary, say that contains uh, hadrons, for example. So they have uh, protons, neutrons, and uh, inside them there are quarks and gluons, and uh, there can be two ways to um, create quark ring plasma from in this picture. First of all, if we try to squeeze a lot, so what happens? The boundary diminishes, the boundary decreases, and the hadrons they start overlapping with each other. Their boundary, the boundaries start overlapping with each other. So that can be done in two ways: either by squeezing, or by producing new hadrons. Uh, by heating it up simply. So when the temperature is uh, greater than the mass of the lightest hadron, that's the pion, there can be the density increases. And uh, in this picture, we can see that uh, these quarks, uh, say for example, the orange one and the blue one, that's uh, those uh, reside within the overlapping region, they don't know to which hadron they belong. So this region, overlapping region, there is, uh, these quarks are called deconfined. And uh, this is uh, the place where uh, this deconfined quarks and gluons are uh, dwell and uh, they form a plasma. So QGP or quark ring plasma is a plasma of quarks and gluons. But what do we mean by plasma? Well, Let's take a simple example of a weakly interacting plasma, for example. So, in this uh, short derivation, you can see that in the first line, we have temperature T, it's much greater than the interparticle uh, potential. And after certain steps, so one or two, three, two to three steps, uh, we get at the last line that uh, small m, that's the number density, times lambda d. That's uh, lambda d cubed is the is sort of a dimension of a length cube. So lambda d is called device screening length that arises due to the screening phenomenon in plasma. And small n times lambda d cube that gives rise to some number because small n is a number density. So within the device volume, if we have many particles, what do we mean by many? many particles, many more than one. So we, if we have many particles, uh, we can call it a plasma. So with this uh, basic understanding, uh, we go to a bit more complicated picture, but I hope that uh, this will uh, help us understand what to expect exactly. So this is something called the space-time diagram. And, uh, we just try to um, 
represent everything we have discussed so far in this diagram. And at the origin, z equal to zero, time equal to zero, there's a collision point, and uh, there are the world lines of uh, the later gold. And uh, we have two proper time, uh, uh, proper time lines like tau zero and tau f. So just after the collision, it takes some time. So the, the, the particles are liberated and they interact with each other. So after a certain time tau zero, uh, so zero to time tau zero, that's called the pre-equilibrium phase. After that, they form some medium, local thermal equilibrium medium. It's called the quark mean plasma medium. And during this pre-equilibrium phase, where uh, just much before the advent of the quark mean plasma medium, there are high energy particles that can or cannot pass through the quark mean plasma medium. But when they pass through the medium, uh, they don't mix up with the medium and they carry very important information about the medium. That's why they're called the probes of the system. They have some examples can be like the chump quark, the bottom quark, jib shy, and so on and so forth. And at a time tau f, uh, it's the proper time tau f, uh, we have uh, uh, from quark gluon plasma, quark gluon, it, it becomes hadronic degrees of freedom because it's a short lived medium, maybe some Fermi, 10 Fermi, and uh, uh, 10 Fermi of uh, time. So in this in this seminar we'll be discussing we'll be taking the natural unit, so C and H cross and K and the Boltzmann constant everything is uh, we consider one. So Fermi is ten Fermi time uh, this quark mean plasma medium hadronizes. They produce uh, particles like ions, kinons, and protons. They are uh, detected by the detectors, and uh, that is the whole. Uh, story about the evolution of uh, quark mean plasma. So in a sense, uh, that's again some pictorial representation. Medium is uh, some random motion of uh, liberated particles, liberated from heavy ions. They are high energy particles. They have reacted motion. They interact with medium particles. They come out of the detect. They come out of the medium, detected. And uh, along with the energetic particles, there can be, uh, there, there will be other sources of particles that are created because of hadronization of the quark mean plasma medium. So the detectors uh, will be really very busy to detect uh, many types of antrons. And uh, of course, uh, photons, and neutrons, and so on and so forth. So in a sense, uh, uh, maybe, we try to indicate that uh, the study of quark mean plasma, QGP, is a study of evolutions. First of all, the QGP medium that's created, uh, that is evolving, and it is dictated by hydrodynamic equation, and evolution of uh, high energy particles. So the medium evolution and the evolution of uh, the probe particles so that is dictated by, say, for example, the Boltzmann transport equation that deals with uh, the time and that deals with the evolution of non-equilibrium distribution. So, in a in a in a broad way, QGP is very much about studying evolutions. So, uh, this incoming particle distribution. Uh, interacting with QGP medium, and there's some outgoing distributions, and uh, these distributions, as uh, as far as the probes are concerned, for example, high energy particles, these two distributions, outgoing and incoming, they are very important, and uh, with some proper inputs like uh, the transport coefficients, like drag, diffusion coefficients. So we can solve some Boltzmann transport equation for high energy particles, and uh, we can take a ratio of the outgoing distribution to the incoming distribution, and we can relate it to experimental observables, something like the nuclear separation factor that gives the indication that uh, there is a medium, what kind of medium it is, and uh, 
so on and so forth. So, so far about a brief introduction about, uh, so far we have uh, given a brief introduction about uh, behavior and collision and uh, the production of working plasma. So since uh, maybe if you have, uh, if you need any quick clarifications, if you have any questions or comments, we'll take a brief pause. So is there any questions or comments or if anyone needs any quick clarification, please tell me. Uh, I have disabled the microphones. So uh, if you if you have a question, please have it in the chat and I will uh, open your, uh, your okay. microphone. Okay, sure. Okay, so uh, is there any question? I can't see, but uh, maybe if there is any, Amar can help, but uh, I don't see any. So can I proceed? Uh, yes, please. Yes. Okay, thank you. So we talked about uh, the detected uh, particles, okay? And uh, the detected particles in the experiment, uh, uh, they are, uh, they follow some kind of uh, statistical distributions, right? And in this picture, uh, we see uh, the proton-proton collision at uh, center of mass energy 900 GeV. And uh, this uh, plot is for the pions, the positively charged pions. And on the y-axis, we have, number of particles within a transverse momentum range, PT to PT plus DPT within the rapidity range, Y to Y plus DY. So as I mentioned, uh, maybe you remember that uh, this PT, the transverse momentum is related to the X and Y components and uh, it's given by square root of X, PX squared plus DY squared. And in, in energy collisions, we are really interested in the transverse momentum distribution. And we can see that uh, this distribution uh, is uh, extensively described by the Boltzmann, uh, but the by the Salis uh, function, that's the red line, not by the Boltzmann Gibbs function, not by the exponential distribution. So, uh, just uh, to be um, clear, uh, this Boltzmann Gibbs distribution, it's uh, given by some exponential function raised to the power negative uh, epsilon p, that's a single particle energy, and that's divided by temperature. And the phenomenological Salis uh, function that has been used in this plot that is given by the power law function in the second formula. And there, that's a two parameter distribution. So instead of one parameter p in the Boltzmann Gibbs, we have two parameters. And the second parameter is called the Salis q parameter. And in the limit, when Q approaches unity, the Salis distribution approaches towards the Boltzmann Gibbs distribution. So this Q uh, limit, it's interesting, as we will see in the later part of our discussion. But so far, uh, we have only mentioned about the phenomenological status. So uh, it, it can be so that uh, we just took uh, this uh, parameterization of the distribution is just maybe one of the many choices. So, but, but it doesn't end here because uh, it can be seen that when we, if when we propose uh, some kind of distribution, particle distribution, there are various ways to approach towards that distribution, okay? For example, the Boltzmann-Gibbs distribution can be obtained starting from statistical mechanics, the exponential thing, it can be, uh, found as a stationary solution of a Boltzmann transport equation. Uh, so it can be found from thermal quantum field theory. And uh, there is something called in the, in the third point is super statistics approach, but uh, that's not relevant here. I mean, we're not talking about that in connection with the Boltzmann Gibbs statistics right now, but in terms of the Sally statistics, uh, we can try to mm, find out 
whether there is any consensus among the different forms that we get from these different approaches. The statistical mechanical approach that we study in our in undergrad studies. So we can introduce similar, uh, just a parallel formalism for the Sally statistics, starting with a definition of the Sally's entropy, postulated uh, definition, postulated uh, Sally's entropy, and uh, from that we can derive the single bond distribution. Can be shown that it can it, it is related to a stationary solution of a modified Hilbert classification. So it's obtainable from um, kinetic theory. It's obtainable from something called the super statistics approach. I quite uh, like this uh, third one, the super statistics approach, because it's really intuitive. Uh, it, uh, it is really uh, from this approach, it's easy to understand what. Uh, Sally's uh, statistics means and what the Q training to one limit does to the Sally's distribution. And uh, we'll briefly mention some developments in thermal quantum field theory that's, uh, that's uh, like uh, that, uh, that is uh, formalism developed uh, combining quantum field theory with vacuum bond statistical mechanics. So that will be a, be a bit away from the scope of uh, today's discussion. And, uh, let's start with uh, what we have studied uh, in our undergrad. Maybe those parts. So on the left, we have a postulate. Uh, it's a Sally's entropy. This given by mm, Pi, that's the probabilities of the microstates raised to the power Sally's uh, parameter Q times some kind of uh, Q logarithm is a generalization of the uh, normal logarithmic function we deal with. So the definition can be found below the third equation. And it uh, falls down to the Boltzmann Gibbs entropy when Q tends to 1. So the Sally's entropy has been proposed in 1988, and surprisingly, as we'll see maybe towards the end of the seminar, that uh, it can be used in many, many areas of physics, uh, economics, social science, linguistics, and uh, it's really ubiquitous. So one may be surprised that uh, given that uh, uh, the Boltzmann Gibbs statistics is so ubiquitous, uh, even the Sally's uh, statistics may be so as well. And uh, with this entropy, we define some kind of uh, constraints, uh, like the probability normalization constraint. So PI are the probabilities of the microstates. So if you have a system, we have energy levels. And uh, we, can, we go through some rituals called constrained maximization of entropy. So the constraints are like the energy constraints, the number constraints for a grand kinetic ensemble uh, with the Maximum maximization, constraint maximization of the Sally's entropy, we get uh, the probability distribution. This is the same way we get uh, exponential function for the Boltzmann tips. So we can see on the left, uh, we have PI, the probabilities, the set of probabilities uh, that's exponential. And on the right hand side, we have a power law probability that looks very similar to <coughs> the Sally's distribution. And, uh, but this is only the probability, and uh, we still have to uh, follow some steps to get the single particle distribution. So that can be done through defining a partition function. So if uh, EI, I is an energy level, we can define EI, the energy of that level, as uh, something called summation over momenta. NP, epsilon P, epsilon P is the single particle energy given by the Einstein's relation, epsilon P square equal to P square plus M square, C equal to one, and uh, the number of particles in this level is given by an I. So you can define a partition function that contains all the information about all the microstates, and we try to find out the average NP that is number of particles, mean number of particles within the momentum range, 
P to P plus GP within a system. And that is called the single particle distribution. So we are already familiar with uh, at least uh, the following three single particle distributions uh, that we encounter in the Boltzmann and Gibbs statistics. The first one, so the first one is given, this is the uh, Maxwell Boltzmann distribution, the Boltzmann Gibbs Maxwell Boltzmann classical one. Second one is the Boltzmann Gibbs Farman Drag. And the third one is the Boltzmann Gibbs uh, Bose Einstein. So on a similar note, uh, we can find out some average NP of a single particle distribution uh, that can be approximated as a part of function that uh, the phenomenological studies use. And this part of function, uh, without any surprise, it goes back to the Boltzmann Gibbs like uh, function, exponential function in the limit q tends to one. So, uh, because of this brief discussion, we realized one thing that SPDs or single particle distributions, uh, they have two pieces of information. First of all, there is uh, the statistics of the levels, the microstates, like uh, whether it's uh, distributed in a Salis way, that's the power of probability, whether it's distributed in the Boltzmann Gibbs way, that's the exponential probability. And what is the statistics of the particles? Whether they are classical, Maxwell Boltzmann, whether they are quantum, Bose Einstein, or Faraday. So, in each statistical mechanics, we can have MB, Maxwell Boltzmann, BE, Bose Einstein, and Farmer Drag. They are T single particle distributions. But why do you need them? Uh, because these single particle distributions, uh, they can be created with the experimentally observed particle distribution up to certain factors. So on the left, I just gave one example. Uh, and uh, generally in the phenomenological studies, uh, these experimentally observed distributions are fitted, uh, they are described with the help of the single particle distributions uh, we obtain from fuels. So to give you some hint, uh, what exactly is done. And on the left hand side of this equation, this is uh, the particle spectra. And on the right hand side, you can see we have the average NP, the single particle distribution. The integration may be trivial uh, if we have the azimuthal angle of the particle at phi. Uh, so it, it can be a trivial integration if we, have, if we don't have any phi difference. And, uh, uh, with this uh, assumption, uh, the Salis uh, Maxwell Boltzmann distribution uh, can be equated with the uh, observed distributions in this way. And the Boltzmann Gibbs Maxwell Boltzmann distribution can be equated with the observed distributions in the following way. And uh, again, we check that uh, in the limit, Q tends to 1. The Salis uh, Maxwell Boltzmann again, goes back to the Boltzmann Gibbs Maxwell Boltzmann. But what it implies, uh, we'll see if we, when we talk about the super statistics approach. So, uh, again, coming back to the same plot that was uh, generated by Professor John Femans, uh, who is my postdoc supervisor at the University of Cape Town. It was presented by him at uh, the CERN Heavy and Forum in 2014. And, uh, as we can see, the Salis distribution describes experimental data in an excellent way, but uh, is it the only choice? It's just a part of function. There can be many other choices. So why is so special about Salis? So yeah, it uh, may not be the only choice, but uh, it's an interesting choice. We have uh, talked a bit about the super statistics, but uh, maybe a uh, super statistical way to get uh, the same polar distribution. And maybe this is time we put some more attention on that. So in this equation, uh, we can see, let's start from the left. Uh, we define something called 
K effect. Uh, we say that this K effective is, uh, we define it as an effective Boltzmann factor. Why Boltzmann factor? Because uh, in the middle, we can see that uh, there is, in the blue font, we have the Boltzmann factor, e to the power minus beta epsilon p. Beta is inverse temperature. And in the integration, we have uh, this each Boltzmann factor e to the power minus beta epsilon p is weighted by some distribution. This is called a gamma distribution, a chi-square distribution. Okay? And uh, so it essentially means that if we have uh, each inverse temperature weighted by some kind of inverse temperature distribution, uh, that's a chi-square distribution, we get back the Salis function. And as we can see on the left-hand side, it looks exactly like uh, Salis probability is with that. So the Salis factor to explain physical, uh, in, in terms of some physical intuitions, it uh, comes as a superposition of many Boltzmann Gibbs factors weighted by a gamma distribution. So in a sense, it's, it's like a fluctuating medium. We have a medium, we have different temperature hotspots. We have fluctuations in that inside the system, and uh, if the uh, uh, and they have different uh, temperatures associated with the hotspots inside the system. If the hotspots are defined uh, is is distributed according to that chi square distribution, uh, they can give rise to the cell statistics. And there is a uh, one wonderful result that. Uh, given in this physical review latest paper, uh, that's the second equation, Q minus one is beta square average minus beta average square by beta average square. So this quantity, this ratio on the right hand side, the farthest right hand side, it's uh, called the relative variance. When we have a relative variance, when we have a variance, that's the variance divided by the average square when we have a fluctuation inside the system, when we have fluctuations inside the system, we have variance. So Q tending to one, it means uh, the variance is zero. That means it boils down to some kind of Boltzmann-like system where there are no fluctuations. So the Salis Q parameter it can be expressed, uh, can be interpreted as a variance of a fluctuating quantity. But this uh, doesn't end here. There can be many other ways of written the distribution, but this is one of the intuitive ways. Uh, the, Q, this, the Q parameter can be related with uh, many other parameters of the system. But this is one of them. When you have fluctuations uh, inside a system, it can give rise to the Sally statistics. So this is one of the intuitive ways to find out uh, the origin of the Salis distributions, the observed Salis distribution. So we have uh, covered already the statistical mechanical approach that we started from entropy. We imposed some constraints, that's uh, the probability normalization constraint, the energy mean energy of the system constraint. And uh, we went on to finding the equilibrium set of probabilities and then trouble. And we found that some power law function that uh, can give rise to the phenomenological size distribution used in the, in the studies uh, that uh, do not much uh, explore about the origin of the distribution, but yeah, it has some origin, as you can see from the statistical mechanics, also from super statistics. And uh, uh, before proceeding to some applications uh, of uh, what we have understood so far, maybe I'd like to pause again, maybe if uh, you need any quick clarifications, uh, you just, uh, you can have, uh, just write uh, in the chat and uh, maybe I'll just pause for a while, maybe yeah, some time. Uh, any questions can be seen? I don't see. Uh, 
okay. So, yeah, so maybe, uh, can I proceed then? If uh, no clarification right now, yeah, it's required. So I'll be proceeding to the, to, uh, the next part, uh, maybe some concluding remarks about the applications of the cell statistics. Uh, as you can see, uh, we can define the mean number of particles inside the system. We can define the mean energy of a system. We can define the pressure of a system from the single particle distributions. And they are pretty known uh, expressions uh, from our studies, um, from studies in undergrads and postgrads. And, uh, why thermodynamic variables like pressure, and energy density, number of particles, why are they important? Because they give us something called the equation of state. For example, pressure of the system as a function of energy density. And that acts as an input, or rather an, an equation that helps us solve the questions regarding the evolution of the working plasma. So that contains, uh, yeah, that contains uh, the energy stress tensor in, in terms of energy density and pressure and so on and so forth. There can be viscosities, but the equation of state that we find from harmonic variables is uh, very important. And as it has been seen that uh, the system produced in energy collisions, they do not follow the boltzmann gibbs statistics. We have to find out some ways to calculate uh, pressure. It's always okay to calculate, uh, to go for the numericals, but recently, as uh, we have seen with Ayman, that uh, if we rather try to find out some numerical, uh, at some analytical closed forms, that's not easy, of course. Uh, it's much more complicated. To, it, it, it has much more complicated forms in comparison with the Boltzmann gives pressure that you can see on the left hand side that can be written in terms of uh, a modified Bessel function uh, K2. The mass uh, argument is mass over temperature. And in comparison with that, uh, the Salis pressure is uh, much more complicated looking, but uh, it reduces the computation time significantly. So in the simulations, uh, we hope that. Uh, newly found results uh, that has been reported in this uh, 2016 paper and this 2022 paper uh, it's, uh, okay, with Hyman. We hope that uh, they will significantly reduce the computation time in the simulations of, uh, related to the evolution of QGP. And uh, let's talk a bit more about uh, <clears throat> what it is exactly what it contains, the analytical form of pressure, the Salis pressure. You can see C1 and C2 and C3, they are like uh, some coefficients uh, in gamma functions in terms of Q, T, well, mainly the Q parameter, I guess. And F is something like uh, the hypergeometric, uh, 2F1, the hypergeometric function. And, uh, since it's a power law, uh, you can see the Salis distribution is power law. And, uh, so average NP is a power law distribution, the single particle distribution. In these papers, we used something called uh, melin burns uh, contour representation of uh, power laws. So it's a complex uh, integral that is uh, that's replaced in place of power law. And, uh, is used uh, mainly in quantum field theory with calculations for, for the propagators who have uh, different powers. So this counter integration leads to two different regions. They are given by the theta functions, the heavy side theta functions. So, so uh, you can see the region is uh, one plus T by N plus mu, where mu is a chemical potential, N is the mass, T is temperature. So there are two regions Q greater than one plus T by N plus mu for which uh, pressure has certain form and 
in the lower region q less than one times q y one times mu equation is given form that is obtained by some kind of analytical continuation um, that we use in complex networks so apart from primary variables that uh, gives us uh, that give us uh, the equation of state that help us to solve questions regarding the evolution of Lagrange transform. Also, transfer coefficients like shear and bulk viscosity of the system is they are important. There can be other types of transfer coefficients uh, that is related to uh, the evolution of energetic particles that uh, we mentioned that are produced much before the advent of the uh, working plasma. These high energy particles like chunk work, uh, chunk box, bottom box, they evolve inside the uh, quarking plasma. They are dragged, fused, and uh, they follow the Boltzmann transfer equation or BTE equation. So this drag and diffusion coefficients uh, can be calculated uh, in several ways. One of the, one of the methods can be uh, to find out the Fokker plan that drag and diffusion coefficients. And uh, there are many other ways uh, from yeah, there, there can be many other ways, but uh, it's interesting that uh, uh, it's interesting that the head quark stationary distribution, that is a stationary solution of uh, the Boltzmann transfer equation, that's not that's not uh, exponential. So they are rather uh, they are salis like, and this salis like the stationary distribution from a kinetic equation can be obtained uh, if we try to modify the Boltzmann transfer equation, keeping, of course, uh, all the all the cons all the considerations in mind, like the uh, Boltzmann A theorem and all. So, in a sense, it's a generalized uh, Boltzmann transfer equation, and uh, the stationary state of this modified Boltzmann transfer equation, which is uh, Salis distribution. So we don't obtain when you consider the working plasma system, even the charm quark that is uh, dragged and diffused and uh, that traverses inside the working plasma medium. Even they don't uh, have an exponential stationary state. They are rather given by a salis distribution. And uh, as we have some intuitive understanding from the, the, the region of the salis distribution, uh, it's uh, it will be always uh, interesting to, to assign the stationary state. Uh, it's uh, to to describe the stationary state in terms of the size distribution. So once more, uh, to summarize, we have uh, taken the statistical mechanical approach. We have taken we have briefly mentioned uh, that uh, the stationary solution of a generalized Boltzmann transfer equation. Uh, it is for particular kind of uh, uh, correlation between the incoming probe quark, chump quark, and the medium particles. Uh, it can be parameterized in terms of the Salis distribution. Third of all, we mentioned uh, super statistics approach. And the fourth one, uh, it is a uh, formal quantum field theory. and uh, why it's important? Because uh, in a system, in a medium, we have something called a thermal propagator. So in this figure, we can see chump or C that's external to the system, interacting with uh, up and down force inside the working plasma. And uh, there is a photon gluon propagator. And the thermal propagator is uh, different from the vacuum propagator I'm talking about. Thermal propagator has another part that contains uh, the single particle distribution. So it is important that uh, we come to some kind of consensus regarding single particle distributions that can be obtained from various approaches. At least that is the case for the for the Boltzmann Gibbs statistics, and uh, that should be the case for the Salis statistics as well, because of this ubiquitous uh, ubiq ubiquity of nature. So this effort is on, and uh, I can't uh, 
say that it's, uh, I, in my opinion, it's uh, still yet to be settled uh, to a satisfactory, ex satisfactory extent, but uh, at least uh, there are efforts. And, uh, the salis like functions, uh, it's a general feature of uh, systems having fluctuations, as we have seen, but it can originate because of uh, some other reason also. If you have small system, like, uh, for example, some collisions in floating plasma, some, uh, sorry, uh, that is created in collisions, uh, high energy collisions, uh, that can have small boundary, it can have fractal phase space structure. So in these uh, kinds of systems, uh, there can be uh, satisfied functions. So to summarize, to conclude, efforts are ongoing to understand the region uh, in energy collisions and, uh, of course, to come to a consensus about the form, about the closed forms. And of course, the application of efforts, they go way beyond the realm of energy collisions. As we can see, it's a book written by Vincent Rosales. Uh, that contains almost everything about the Sally statistical mechanics. Uh, that's also called non extensive statistical mechanics. And maybe the fonts are too small picture, but you can see it's having application in physics, cold atoms, uh, condensed matter, plasma, astrophysics, geophysics, quantum chaos, in chemistry, in economics, computer science, bioscience, cellular automata, even in linguistics. And uh, I'd add something to the list. That's uh, one of the papers he recently wrote with uh, um, a mathematician and a cognitive psychologist uh, about something called delay discount. That's a uh, behavior, social science. Uh, it's a behavior in decision making. And uh, he have proposed some kind of uh, effective exponential model that very much looks like a Sally's distribution. So it's ubiquitous and it will be interesting and it will be, it will be interesting to study it in more depth. And uh, of course, the study of energy collisions and heavy and physics, it attracts many branches of theoretical physics, including energy physics, fluid dynamics, uh, maybe some context of uh, radio CFT many branches of physics. So it's, a, it's, of course, a good opportunity for theoreticians and experimenters uh, to study this medium. So thank you for your kind attention. I'd like to stop here and uh, maybe uh, the, yeah, maybe it's open for discussions now. Amar, over to Amar. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much for the presentation. It was very, uh, pedagogical uh, so maybe uh, time for uh, questions if uh, if uh, you have any questions please uh, raise your hand uh, or you can have it in the chat i was actually meaning to ask about uh, applications for uh, cell distribution outside physics but you answered that one uh, yeah I, I was surprised by uh, by the applications in uh, econo uh, economy and uh, linguistics and uh, yes, uh, you mean about the social science? Yes, because uh, it didn't seem uh, to be uh, <clears throat> no, that's really like a an interesting tool used outside physics. Yeah, no, I mean that's an excellent point. Actually, you see, uh, maybe I can elaborate a bit more if uh, we have some time. Uh, for discussion, Please. I hope, yes. Sorry, uh, I'm just trying to, let me, yes, this one. You see, uh, let's take some time to understand it in more detail. I have, I have, I have mentioned that uh, the Salis factor on the right hand side, it's written as a superposition of many Boltzmann factors. So the idea is you weight e to the power minus beta EP that's written in blue font, that's the Boltzmann Gibbs factor. And you weight every beta with some beta distribution. 
So that beta distribution is a chi-square distribution. Now, hmm. why chi-square distribution appears? What is the origin? You see, in, in, in every system, in a social system as well, there are fluctuations, right? So hmm. if you take any variable, uh, in our case, in social science uh, application, we took something called impulsivity. Like you, we intuitively know what impulsive decisions means, right? Like if some person is very impulsive, like uh, the person has to, there's something called impulsivity. Do you understand what I mean? I mean, there's a quantity. So how impulsive you are regarding your decisions. And if you contain, if you, if you consider a bunch of uh, people, they'll have different impulsivities, okay? Not all the people will be impulsive to the same extent. So now it's very similar to temperature. So temperature is fluctuating. Impulsivity in a social system is fluctuating. And what can we say about their distribution? How is temperature or how is impulsivity distributed? We don't know anything about that. We don't know how they're distributed, but we can have an educated guess, not a guess, but we can have some criteria. For example, in our case, we took a distribution that's the least informative one. So maybe if we define some kind of quantity, like uh, say, for example, uh, maybe information entropy or something, and we go through some kind of a maximization. So we get this chi-square distribution. That's the least informative option. So in a system, when you don't know anything how, about how a quantity is distributed, we can take the chi-square distribution. So in that way, this social system is very similar to the physical system that uh, contains temperature. And in the social system, we have impulsivity. So mathematically, they are very similar in ideas. Uh, it, it's, it's the same concept. Also, uh, to um, extend a bit more, uh, from our laboratory, from Bagalubov laboratory, there are even some, uh, some techniques of Hilbert space that is applied to decision theory. And uh, that's uh, because it's very abstract in nature, you know, the techniques of Hilbert space. So that also was applied to um, this decision theory and that's called quantum decision theory because of uh, the same mathematical technique. I mean, not of course, uh, this decision theory is quantum in nature, but of course, because of the Hilbert space techniques used, but it is possible. So that's because uh, mathematics is a very general language and it can be applied to many fields. So that is my opinion about uh, the ubiquity of uh, this distribution in many systems, even beyond physics. I hope uh, yeah. that will clarify some. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I uh, I uh, get the idea, but uh, it's still very rare to uh, to see ideas from uh, from uh, high energy physics and collision uh, being used <laughs> in in other contexts. So <laughs> it's uh, it's fascinating to uh, to look at it. I'll uh, I'll look at it deeper uh, later. Yes, on. it's even used in finance. It's even used in um, economics. So. There are some funny applications as well. They have some uh, trajectory of some monkeys inside some forest. And <laughs> that's also, yeah, some way it's related to the Salis distribution because uh, yeah, the trajectory of some kind of monkeys that they're also uh, the Salis statistics, uh, Salis distribution is applied. So there's no wonder. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> hard to believe it works, but uh, yeah, if it works, it works. Uh, yeah, for them, uh, yeah, actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, uh, uh, so uh, do we have uh, any more questions, guys? Okay, so let me uh, thank uh, Dr. Bacitaria. Thank you so much for, uh, for doing this. Uh, we appreciate the time and the presentation. It was very uh, informative, actually. Thanks very much. And uh, it was really a pleasure and honor. And uh, I really enjoyed it. And, uh...
just uh, best wishes to all of you and my yeah thank you so much we uh, we hope we can uh, meet you in person uh, maybe if you are uh, in egypt uh, we can uh, yes i very much we can also we would love that happy uh, to have some opportunities yeah that would be really excellent thank you thank you thank you so much thank you goodbye bye